This is the Hypothetically Sound Podcast. Hosted by Alec, Randy, and Xavier. Where we take a hypothetical look at the world around us. Exploring the what-ifs, maybes, and how-comes. Join in on the unfiltered, raw, and real conversations as we explore the world around us. Welcome back to Hypothetically Sound. We hope you are having a great day. As always, I am one of your hosts, Randy, joined by the other host, Alec. Alec, yeah, yeah, you are. (laughs) And we are on album number 90, ACDC, Back in Black, in Apple Music's top 100 albums of all time. Hell yeah. So, Alec, What's as good? always, we start the same way of every episode. Yeah. What do you know about ACDC? Man, classic band, started in the 70s, you know, prevalent in the 80s. Uh, me, personally, I'm more of a Kiss fan. Who just so happened to start the same year, like seventy three or something, you know. Um. Otherwise, like, yeah, I mean, if you like rock, you have heard of ACDC. You've at least heard some of their songs, including some on this album. Yeah. Um. I've obviously heard of ACDC. I don't. I don't know how you can listen to music and not hear of ACDC. Uh. But I've never searched out ACDC when it comes to rock. Um. So I don't know much about the band before listening to this album. Obviously, I've heard some of their songs. They're very popular. They charted number one here. They went 25 Platinums in America. They've charted everywhere uh, in the world. They are world famous. Uh, but back I, didn't in- know they were, I didn't know they were an Australian band, by the way. I, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. But- I did not know that either until I saw where they were charting. I'm like, they charted number one in Australia. That's usually pretty weird for an American band. Oh, they're not American. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, but yeah, Back in Black is the seventh studio album by Australian rock band ACDC. It was released in 1980. And uh, this is the first album with new lead singer Brian Johnson after the death of Bon Scott. Yeah. Uh, And this is uh, the first album after their commercial breakthrough, Highway to Hell. Uh, So yeah, you ready to talk about ACDC's Back in Black? Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. Uh, This is a 10-track album. Yep. Mm -hmm. So not horribly long, nice uh, number of songs. Yeah. Uh, 42. 42 minutes. 42 minutes? Yeah. Which, by the way, I complained about George Michaels being too (laughs) long for 10 tracks. And this is only like a six-minute difference. So it's pretty long for the amount of tracks it is. Like, each song is... Good, like, yeah. four minutes. Mm-hmm. Which is to be expect more expected from a rock album when they're playing live instruments. Yeah. Because uh, you want to give everybody in the band a opportunity to shine. And to do that, songs need to be longer. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure, like, every song on this has a guitar solo or, like, almost oh, yeah. every song. And, you know, that takes up a good 30 of minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I do want to say about ACDC before we get into it. So this was their seventh studio album. They released Highway to Hell the year before. And the release for those about to rock, we salute you the year after this. So they were just cranking out albums. And that's I, impressive when it comes to rock because you have to have so many like melodies with the drums and the guitars and so many solos and so many lyrics to put out seven albums is wild. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty pretty impressive. But okay, so let's get into it. We start. With track number one, Hell's Bells. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, it's a strong start to the album, you know. Uh, if you know ACDC, you've probably heard Hell's Bells. It's a song that com- commemorates the uh, previous lead singer, Bass. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good. It's just good. You, you hear the bell and you instantly know what, it, what yeah. it is. I gave it an 8 out of 10. It's just classic rock, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, if you know rock music, you know Hell's Bells. Even if you don't know rock music and you've watched enough shows like Supernatural, uh, other CW shows, other shows in general where rock is like a theme, Hell's Bells is usually used. Um, it has such an epic opening, and I think that's why it's used. Like you hit that first like thirty seconds of song, and it's just electrifying. Um, it's a great song. It is a great start to the album. Uh, great drums, great guitars. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Huh, okay. 
Then we move to track number two, Shoot to Thrill. Uh, I thought it had another great opening, yeah. Uh, which is a theme with ACDC. It, just rock bands in general. As I said the best part about 70s, 80s rock was these openings. And I said, I think I said it with the Eagles and I've said it with other groups, is when the songs come on as a fan in the audience of a concert, by the intro, you know what song's coming and it gives you that time to get ready for the lyrics and the just energy of the song. It pumps up the crowd and it's great. Um, I gave this another 7 out of 10. That's fair. Um, I also gave it a 7 out of 10. I mean, yeah, it is just the epitome of a 70s, 80s rock song, man. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's about sex. He references, you know, guns and uh, pulling the trigger for things, you know. Um, It's catchy. It's good to hear. Like, it's just nice to listen to. Just a good, solid song, 7 out of 10. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we move to track number three. What do you do for money, honey? What did you think of it? Um, the chorus, like, so the lyrics are right. Um, the build up of it is is decent. Uh, but it picks up when the chorus hits, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the bridge into that guitar solo goes so hard, man. Yeah. Uh, and that like sent it a little bit over for me. I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. Nice. Oh uh, yeah, I said it was a good song. Um. I said the vocals and instrumentals on this song specifically work very well together, uh, more equal than they are in other songs where they highlight each other instead of one or the other shining in the song. Uh, So that was a nice change. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10 as well, which is going to be a theme for this album for me. (laughs) Uh, It's a very solid song. Mm -hmm. Uh, We move to the next song, which is number 4, Giving the dog a bone. Yeah, a song about blowjobs. <laughs> what did you think? Um, I put in my notes. I forgot how much like seventies and eighties rock is just strictly about sex. Yeah, like literally in the last three <laughs> songs, three of the four songs of this album is just is about sex. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like you know when you're younger, it all just sounds like a cohesive piece of music like you just listen to it it sounds good Mm -hmm. and as you're older you're like oh yeah okay all right um but you know it's it's all right i gave it a seven out of ten i thought it was pretty good yeah um so like yeah this this is one of three tracks that i rated the lowest made like the lowest on the album i had three tracks that all equal to me Uh, i just didn't think it was anything special like nothing stood out super to me uh, it's a good song. Like none of the songs are bad on the album. Uh, There's a reason why it was a uh, smashing success everywhere in the world. Uh, but like, if we're being pr- like hard on the albums, like we said, we're trying to be. Yeah, it was nothing special. Nothing that stood out immensely to me. I gave it a six out of ten. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Then we are halfway through the album with the next track, which is "Let Me Put My Love Into You," track number five. Uh, I thought this song, uh, like, particularly on the album, had his best singing. Mm -hmm. Or at least to me, it sounded like the best singing on the album. Um, I thought it was a solid track. But like most rock bands uh, that aren't the Eagles album we listen to, uh, the music, especially when you're pumping out an album a year, the songs on the album seem to be in the same mold. Uh, and at this point, five tracks in, like nothing in the track, like there's little differences in each of the tracks, obviously, mm. but I don't think there's anything that like hugely sets them apart or shows their range. Uh, and just a lot of the tracks start to like blend together and tracks sound similar, which isn't like, it isn't a horrible thing. I just like more diversity in my music. Uh, I like people showing their range. Uh, but it's still a good song. I gave it a seven out of ten. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, something about this one uh, specifically was a little bit different to, for me. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't sound like the last three up to yeah. that point. Um, 
but I enjoyed it a lot. Like it was really pleasing to the year for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything just works for it, right? So I gave it an eight and a half out of ten. Nice. I do think it's one of the better tracks on the album. Nice. I, I do have one, two tracks higher than the sevens. So I found it equal to most tracks on the album. But yeah, that's why we all have different tastes. Uh, then we no- move to the namesake on the album, track number six, Back uh, in Black. I do want to say, I think the second half almost hard carries. Of uh, Let Me Put My Love Into You? No, just like oh. in general. Oh, in the like, album. Yeah. yeah, in the album. I think it just hard carries. The second half is better than the first half. Yeah, I do have two eights in the second half. So, yeah. <laughs> Even though my lowest rating song is in the second half, <laughs> I still think like the second I half think I, I know what one it might be. So we'll see. Uh, if we have our similar minds. Um, I think people are going to dislike me with this take. Okay. Uh, so with Back in Black, I don't think up until listening to the album fully, I ever fully listened to the song. Uh, I I see, I think it's a good song, and I see why people like it a lot, and I see why it's a namesake. But to me, just because of how overplayed it's got since it came out in 1980, I think the song's overrated. I only gave it a 6 out of 10. See, I think you're way wrong, but that's fine. Uh, it's a classic <laughs> fucking rock song, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably one of their most recognizable songs. Mm-hmm. Again, easy like 8.5 out of 10 for me. Yeah, but like you said, everybody has a different day. I... I I have this bias of uh being wrong. Um <laughs> uh, so we move to track number seven. You shook me all night long. What did you think? Um so it's another classic, okay? hmm Uh in my opinion, probably the best song on the album. Uh this is I think the first song that was like actually like fully written by the lead. And you can kind of tell the difference of the style, but it works so good, man. Mm-hmm. Um, the guitar solo goes nutty. The vocals are great. The lyrics just, just blend well. Everything's just good. It's just good. It's a good song. Yeah. Get it a nine out of 10. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I said, uh, just like you, this is a classic. That was the first thing I put down. Just classic. Uh, has very great riffs, solid drums. Uh, and like I said earlier, I thought it was his best singing. Uh, I think this is his best vocals. Um, and probably, like you said, it's because he wrote the song fully. It's probably his baby, and he wanted to kill it, and he did. Uh, I think it has fun lyrics. It is one of my favorite tracks, tied for my favorite track on the album. I gave it an 8 out of 10. We have uh, three songs left. Mm-hmm. We are on track number eight. Have a drink on me. Yeah, a tribute song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it it goes hard. It's good. It's pleasing to the ear for me. Like quick, simple premise. Uh, eight out of ten for a tribute song. So I didn't know it was a tribute song. So now I feel a little bad, uh, but I'm not gonna change my score. I didn't think it was a bad song or anything like that. It was a fun song. Uh. At least because this is another one of the albums I listened straight through. Because there's like 10 tracks I can listen straight through. Started blending in with the rest of the album to me. Uh, and I gave it a 6 out of 10. Okay, that's fine. And then we are on track number 9. Shake a Leg. Yeah, man. This was my lowest rated song. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it was about it. Uh, this one was probably the only one that I thought maybe blended in to other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the guitar solo was good, but like the rest was just like, not great. I mean, it was Mm -hmm. good, but not good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In comparison to everything else, I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Fair, fair. I did. So I agree with you that it it, like, uh, uh, let me phrase it. I don't agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, I can see... Why it like you say it blended in with other songs? I thought it was different. Uh, yeah, but I, your opinions are wrong. So, <laughs> like, go ahead. 
I thought it was more of a dancey song uh, compared to the rest. Like I said, uh, it has the guitar solo and guitar parts in general had more of a dance hall TV show vibe to them, uh, which I thought was different from the rest of the album. It sounded more like m- less heavy metal and more pop rock. Uh, to me, and I could be wrong. I mean, maybe I need to listen again, and I just don't. I didn't take proper notes or something. But that's what I wrote down, and I like. I'm going to stick with my notes. Um, I gave it a seven out of ten. So obviously, I didn't think it was horrible or anything like that. Uh, I thought it was better than have a drink on me, apparently. Uh, but yeah, no, I I thought it had some unique parts to it. Okay. And then we move to the final track on the album, uh, which is Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution, track number 10. Yeah. Um, so as a final song, it felt like a goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um, it delivers very well. Uh, the intro builds up slowly. It feels more calm co- and collected mm-hmm. and cohesive than the other songs. Like, it just gives you a very, like, this is the end of an album song feel, which is, I feel, it feels good in a way. Yeah. Um, It's funny that it's on this album in my head because it's like, uh, they're literally just talking about how it's rock and roll. It's just, you know, music. It's nothing else. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, especially at that time where, like, rock and roll was seen as, like, a degenerate type. Mm-hmm. Uh, But, like, this is on the same album that has, like, five sex songs in a row. Yeah. And so it makes me it makes me kind of laugh thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, like you. like giving the uh, dog a bone. Like you just had a whole song like that, and they're just like rock and roll. It's just music, man. It's just it's just an expression of yourself. Hey, their expression <laughs> is sex. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's cool. They do what they do. It worked, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I gave it an eight out of ten. I thought it was a good closer. Yeah, no, I feel. Um, and I agree. With a lot of what you said, I thought it was a great last song. It has probably my favorite chorus on the album. Um, I do think that Hell's Bell and, and this song should have switched places. Like, if I was constructing the album, I would have this be first. And Hell's Bells or one of the other trip, like, Back in Black or Have a Drink on Me be last. Uh that's just how I would do it, but I gave it an 8 out of 10. It was one of my favorite songs on it. Um, but yeah, for final thoughts on the album as a whole, and just my feelings on ADC, ACDC, even after listening to the album, obviously I don't know, like, I didn't know this was their seventh. I would have thought this was, their, like, their second album, just because that's how little I actually know about ACDC. Um, and, and and it's still wild. Same thing I said with other rock albums. They have so many mainstream hits that are seen as classic now on this album that you would think this was a greatest hit album. Um, and I think it's more maybe I just don't know more songs from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just, it's weird, like, because we talked about, like, Eminem the other day, how he has so many albums. And... I can only point to one or two complete albums that he has. And every other album has like one or two really great songs and the rest are okay or bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I get maybe just, I'm a little like jaded from albums like that in the most part in the hip hop community uh, that I'm not used to complete albums having so many hits or maybe just time. I, I don't know what it is. Um, and then when it comes to the list, I understand ACDC's place in rock history. But after listening, and I've said their name a bunch of times in this episode, after listening to the Eagles album in this one, I don't think ACDC is better than the Eagles. Bro, uh, I, okay, I wasn't going to say nothing, mm-hmm. but like, Kiss is better than ACDC yeah. for sure. I and Kiss ain't even on here. And like there's other bands I think that are better than ADC, ACDC that were around mm-hmm. in the 70s and 80s that yeah. are on the list, such as like Guns N' Roses and stuff. But mm-hmm. like Kiss is better than ACDC. I think in like in so far, like some of these albums aren't on here because of their mainstream success. Like there's albums 
that are on here that didn't have a ton of mainstream success. Like, listen, George Michaels didn't have a whole bunch of mainstream success. Uh, Flower Boy didn't have that a whole bunch of mainstream success. Like, they were popular, but like they didn't have like awards and stuff like that. Where ACDC's Black and Black was the number one charted. It's multi-time platinums in every country in the world. Twenty-five in America. I think it is literally placed on this album on this list because of how popular it is. Like, is it, I don't even know. Like, someone who's listening that knows ACDC, tell me, is this even their best album? Like, they have eight. At least I know of eight albums they have. <laughs> so, is this better substantially than the seven other albums? Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what it just comes down to. Uh, is are they on here because this album is that iconic and that great, or just because ACDC? is rock and roll like they are one of the bands that put the face of rock and roll when you think rock and roll you think kiss you think acdc you think guns and roses like is that why they're on this list as and that's just my take on the album i didn't th- obviously i thought it was uh better than the middle of the road it is i know understand its place in history i understand why it's seen as a classic i gave it a seven out of ten i would listen to it again i would put it on in a road trip and listen to the full album yeah, uh, mine came out to be eight out of ten, so very <clears throat> close, similar, you know. Um, but yeah, again, I just feel like there are better bands and things like that. I mean, even like looking at my the Eagles' uh, album "Hotel California," I gave that eight point two five. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I feel like it is a little low if it is going to be on a list, and I just feel like there might be other bands that deserve the spot. <laughs> um. Otherwise, like, but yeah, like that. Don't, don't let that take it away. It was a good album. It was good. It was it was a nice listen, um, and I liked it. Yeah. Uh, now that we're at ninety, I can honestly say there are some albums here that I'm not sure why they're on there. Yeah. Or like, I understand why someone would put them on there, but like, if you're going by that kind of standard, I do feel like there's other albums that should be there instead as well. Yeah. Like I, I feel like the people who did this, the executives, the uh, big names in music, and whoever they did to form this list, their reasoning, and, and maybe, and maybe it was different people. Maybe they had three people who did a hundred to ninety, and they were like, "Okay, I want you to do eighty-nine to 80 in a different group." Because I, I feel like the construction of it, like there has to be different criteria as they were doing. I, I, like it couldn't be the same group who did all hundred because like like I said ACDC I feel is on here because of their success and then you look at like Robin or Burial they're here because of their influence on their genre mm. and while ACDC is a classic rock band I don't feel like their sound influenced rock at that time I I cannot say or deny that allegation you just presented because i was not alive at that time true and i did not i do not study uh rock the same way i do hip-hop so. no no and 100 percent. like i i could be completely off base and if someone's listening like you're completely off base let me know and i guess i'll do more research in like no i won't because i, I don't care that much uh but like just from my understanding of rock bands around this era and around this time and we're going to include the egos in this like, I don't see the, like, Burial is known as the person that put dubstep on the map. Uh, Robin is the lead in her area of music. You're telling me that ACDC is, like, the lead in the rock, in the 80s rock? I just, I just don't understand the positioning and the criteria. Maybe if they put out a list, it will help me understand it more. But yeah, at this point, there's songs, albums I would take off from 90, but I couldn't tell you who I would put on. Yeah. Uh, and then while we're just here talking about it, do you have a favorite album you had in your first 10 that we listened to? Uh, yeah. Um, it would be easy to say Confessions. 
Uh, but I already knew how I felt about Confessions, and nothing changed while listening to the album. Um, I think my favorite will be Rage Against the Machine. Mm-hmm. My surprise album of that I didn't think I would like and I liked tremendously would be Solange's Seat at the Table. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, like I said, I had a bias towards her uh, that for some for whatever reason, media or social media or whatever, put in my head that she wasn't talented and I couldn't have been farther wrong. Uh, so yeah, Seat at the Table is my favorite and I'm just going to give you my least favorite at the same time. Which was Burial by Untrue or Untrue by Burial, um, just wasn't good. It 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 was so lackluster for what I expected from a dubstep artist and mm-hmm. the king of dubstep. That yeah, should have been there. Should have been an honorable mention. <laughs> fair, fair. How about you? What was your favorite, um, least favorite, and surprise favorite? Um, Rage Against the Machine, my favorite. Like even like. Even if we didn't do like a number ranking thing, like I think it's still my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just good. It's it's good blend of music. Uh, I love like alternative types of music, and that's what they are, you know. Yeah, uh, they're all just good songs. Um, my least favorite has to be Burial. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, it, I I still can't recommend that album. It was it wasn't great. Um. My surprised album? I don't know. I'll be real. My surprise album isn't like my surprise, like, oh, favorite or whatever. No, it, mm-hmm. it, it is definitely Burial going into it. I expected, <laughs> like, reading the description. Yeah. I expected not life changing dub music or anything mm-hmm. like that, right? But I was expecting some, like, good shit. Mm-hmm. And I got some melancholy, I can't even say the word, uh, monotone loops yeah 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 that's i was like ah. yeah it, i think you're kind of like a harsh critic sometimes oh yeah 100 percent. and so when you were like i hate this album i was like oh you hate a lot of good things let me look at <laughs> black and back uh, black and black oh my goodness yeah or um better yet careless whisper like you don't even know the name of the song right mm-hmm. so like <laughs> i was like he's probably wrong it's probably not not it was, it was bad was bad <laughs> like you even warned me and i didn't believe you and it was like oh oh god and the worst part is it's not like super long i don't think i don't remember mm-hmm. thank god but it, <laughs> it definitely dragged on it probably felt like the longest album in the batch yeah i'm trying to think like if i'm trying to think of what like one song that I like we've listened to easily a hundred songs at the minimum a hundred songs. Um, I'm trying to think like obviously my two highest rated were Burn and Confessions Part Two. I rated those both a nine point seven. Yeah, that's crazy. That's still crazy to me. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Um, but if I had to pick a song, that obviously I'm taking out Usher because I'm biased and I knew he was going to be the highest rated. Um, I think if I had to choose a song that I want to see in person live, um, I think it would be See You Again by Tyler, the Creator. I was going to say, I would like to see Tyler, the Creator uh, live Mm -hmm. after. I mean, I've listened to a lot of his albums, including this before we even listened to it. So I got to re-listen to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if I could have seen him during the Flower Boy era, that would have been great. If I could have seen him during the Igor era, it would have been great. If I could have seen him at any point in time, I think it would be great. And I still think no matter if you were to go to, like, one of his shits right now, it would be great. Like, I think mm-hmm. he like he would have been tied for my favorite album, for sure. Oh. Yeah. But I never listened to the full Rage before, and I was just like, oh, yeah, this is just good. And then... um Taking away Burial, because obviously I rated all of his stuff very low. One song that I don't think I will ever, ever listen to again um, is Praying for Time by George Michaels. I didn't like the sound of it. I didn't like that it sounded like he was 
in an empty orchestra room. I didn't like that. It sounded like he was in my ear singing, like physically. A song I wish I never heard. <laughs> um, yeah, my least favorite song out of the all of them we listened to, mm-hmm. hands down, we dance to the beat mm. <laughs> by Robin. Yeah, hands down, awful. I think I would rather go through all of Untrue again than listen to that one song. <laughs> but I have to be honest, like it is. It was bad. It was bad to me. No, yeah, fair, fair. Um, so we hope you guys have enjoyed the first ten. Actually, I guess it's technically eleventh episode. Um, of the top hundred, we are on. This was number ninety. We moved to the eighties now, and uh, eighty nine is the Fame Monster by Lady Gaga, uh, which is a long album. It is twenty songs. 22, three songs, actually. Yes, because they put the deluxe edition. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, we hope you guys have enjoyed. But before we get out of here and let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'm actually excited for the 80s. uh, We got some good hip hop albums in there. Yeah, yeah. It's very, there's a couple like surprise albums, uh, a couple albums I've never heard before, and a couple of my favorite albums like in hip hop. Um, So I'm excited. I'm excited. But Alec, before the people dry up from anticipation, you want to give people their shout out? Yeah, shout out to everybody who thinks Kiss is better than ACDC, as I said earlier, because you are objectively correct. There is no argument about it. It's just the truth, okay? (laughs) And everyone who agrees with me is correct. And everyone who disagrees is wrong. That's just how it works today. Normally, (laughs) I let people have their opinions. Nope. Mm. So go home, Greg. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I know we hope a, oh sorry i was gonna say i know there's a greg out there listening who just cursed at me saying like well acdc is better than kiss no fuck you greg yeah fuck you bob mm. i'm sorry bob you didn't do anything no nah, if you think acdc is better than kiss bob fuck you too bob <laughs> all right but we appreciate you guys listening yeah uh, we're excited for the rest of this journey uh, there's a lot of music to listen to, a lot of weeks of podcasts left. Uh, but we hope you guys enjoy this. You know what to do. Leave the comments, likes, shares. Follow us on all the social media sites at Hypothetically Sound or Biggie Ran or Free Alake. And until next time. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you. Deuces. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Hypothetically Sound. We hope you enjoyed the episode. All episodes can be found at hypotheticallysound.podbean.com, as well as on Apple, Spotify, and Pandora. For full unedited video versions of the podcast, please visit us at youtube.com slash hypotheticallysound.